with us online. Howdy, everybody turn around and give them a big howdy. Howdy. We're so glad to see you. It is good to be in the house of God. We're going to sing his praise this morning. I don't know if you're on U version. Who's on U version? Who gets the scripture of the day? It was such a good one this morning. I had to share it with you. Uh, it was Romans 6.23, and it says this. When people sin, they earn what sin pays, death. But God gives his people a free gift. Who likes free? All right. Who gives his people a free gift? Eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. What an exciting reason to give your praise to God today. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, hey, let's do this.
on, give a little wave in the house today. Has he ever delivered you? He delivered me. Amen. Has he ever healed your body? If he has, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, God, that you're healer. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. somebody or, or, or elbow bump them, whatever their wristband says. Do whatever that says. Let them know how happy you are to see him in the house of God. Amen.
She was about two or three. And she loved Veggie Tales. Remember Veggie Tales? We would let her watch that on TV. Well, the Christian bookstore was going to have the Veggie Tales come. You know, the people dressed up in the thing. And so we were like, this is going to be perfect. I'm going to take my two or three year old daughter to see some freakishly large uh, vegetables. Nothing wrong with that. We walked into the place. And she didn't see him at first, but when she did, brother, she grabbed a hold of my neck. And I've been a wrestler before, and I'm telling you, <laughs> state championship type of thing. She grabbed my neck and choked it up, and I was like, my God, I couldn't get her off of me. I was just like, Tessa was had her feet trying to pull it. I was like, oh, my God, baby, help me. She's rolling. She's rolling. She's trying to take me out. And I said, I said to them, I said, that'll preach, though. I said, I said, family, what should we preach about? What should that tell us about the Lord? Tessa said, the, the, the Lord has not given us the spirit of fear. <laughs> so listen, for the spirit of God that God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or me, his prisoner. Rather, join me in his suffering for the gospel, the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, not because of what we've done, but because his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. Let me tell you something. I used to live in fear. I didn't want to tell people about my faith. I'm too squeamish about that. I don't want to make them upset. But God's done too much for me. How many of you can say that today? God has done too much. He's been too good. Everybody can say whatever they want at work. They can get around the cooler and cuss. But I don't want to do that. I want to tell you about the goodness of the Lord that when I was unsaved and I was yet his enemy, he came in with the standard of love and saved me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is our way maker and we will not be ashamed. We will glorify the Lord every day, this day and every day. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, family, thank you for helping me preach that this morning. Hallelujah. Hey, whether you're joining us here on campus or out there in the internet, I don't know if that's the right word, the internet, the interwebs, we want to just welcome all of you and say welcome with us this morning. We're so glad that you came to hang out and worship with us this morning. Everybody would probably know this. Every man knows this, but we had an awesome event here Saturday. <laughs> And uh, I'm just going to tell you, this is the formula for all men. Good food, weapons, <laughs> <laughs> and, 
and the need for the Lord, okay? We had all of that, all right? Uh, chef Carnell, if you don't know that, he is a chef. He uh, uh, came and uh, gave us a great meal. Thank you. Ryan led our worship, and uh, Ron, De Ron Denny and uh, Perry Dodge provided for our spiritual food. Uh, and we enjoy fellowship, basketball, knife throwing, axe throwing, all of that. Uh, thank you, Mike, for providing the wood for our axes, the knives. Uh, if you know Mike Heaven, you're not going to mess with him. He's, he's ready. Okay, so just so you know. <laughs> thank you both, uh, Chris, Scott, Noah, John, Jonah, for all that you did to help out and make this an awesome day. And so many men have given the feedback to say, Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Family Church, for putting that together. So, amen. amen. <laughs> hey, have you got a small group yet? If you don't have a small group, there is a small group for everybody. Our latest group launched last week and is a physical fitness and weightlifting group led by Jim Lair. Jim, raise your hand. There he is. <laughs> we just call him Lil Swole because he's a big boy. He's Yeah, he's yoked, so... Get all the details about this group on Facebook. We are better together, uh, and we need each other right now. We do. And uh, so you can go to familychurch.net, click on the find your people, and join a small group. Amen? Good. Amen. Good. Let's connect. We want to stay connected with you. Visit familychurch.net and scroll to the bottom of the page and subscribe to receive email and text messages and all our updates. You can also share a prayer request or a praise report. We love those. You can sign up for text updates. You can do this right now on your phone. Go ahead and fire up your, your texting app and text, say, text me, text me to 313131. Thank you for the help, Joel. <laughs> Again, that's text me to 313131. Everybody say harvest party. Harvest party and gumbo. Hey, you guys don't know what I'm doing for you, but I'm putting them on the hook every time. When I say there's going to be gumbo, he's like, Terry, come on. <laughs> Harvest party, it's almost October, and you know what time it is. Almost, uh, uh, our, uh, it's almost the harvest party time. Make your, mark your calendar right now for Sunday, October 25th from 5 to 7.30 for a wonderful time of fellowship, enjoying the fall weather, and enjoying Pastor's delicious chicken and sausage gumbo. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, yes, and there's somebody's, uh, let's see, and chili this year. There will be chili from all who, all the chili makers. So anybody, anybody, any chili makers out there? Raise your hands. Okay. All right. So I'll make sure... I'll make sure I bring a bucket for the gumbo, and I'll set that to the side. And the chili, right, amen. You got to strategize, Pastor. You got to strategize. <laughs> hey, Dream Team, if you are breathing today, God has uniquely gifted you to make a difference. Are you ready to join the team and make a difference? All right. There are openings in our elementary and preschool classrooms. That is a big deal media, music, and hospitality teams. Visit our website, click on the leaders and dream team to get the details. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Terrence. Hey, a lot of great things. I'm looking forward to the harvest party this October. It's going to be great to get together and fellowship outdoors. We're praying for an amazing weather night. And we've had some, over the last few, many years, we've, we've gotten some great weather nights. So we're praying for that so we can have a lot of fellowship. Maybe, uh, just who knows, we'll, we'll take it up a notch and see what God has in store for us. But uh, yes, we got the 15-gallon pot ready for chicken sauces gumbo, and we're looking forward to a great, great time. So amen, amen, amen. Hey, also, the, for all the youth, and uh, Perry, Dodge, I'm not sure if you know about this or not, but they're organizing a party that's going to show up at your house October 23rd. I, I don't know. I don't know if you knew about that or not, but but be ready. Amen. Anyone that you know the Dodges and their family, they're a blast. They're a great part of our youth team. Amen. Amen. 
all the youth put that on your calendar and anyone else you might be able to just slip right in they might not even realize it so but hey that's coming up october 23rd also we're looking and kicking getting ready geared up for a, a freedom study coming up it's a very powerful study about being free and because the sun has set you free amen and experiencing the freedom of christ amen so we're looking at that's coming up very soon also uh, i would say wednesday nights yeah, well, you know, before all this COVID stuff here, we had uh, we had a lot of Wednesday night services. So we're going to be sending out a survey in the next few days, uh, let you know what our thoughts are about Wednesday night. We want your feedback. So we're going to be sending that out very soon. So be looking at your email. If you're not getting your email, familychurch.net, and you can get, uh, look at the bottom of the page and sign up for all of our emails so you can do what's going on. Also, if if you're new to small groups, uh, a small group leader, we have some next steps tools for you. So let us know uh, if you want to be refreshed. It's, it's great curriculum, uh, helping people follow Christ and point them to Christ. And we want to put these tools in your hands for all of our small group leaders to help your small group uh, operate more effectively and encourage people on a greater basis. So so we, we, we appreciate these tools that we can offer for you. So we want all of our small group leaders Give us a shout out. We're gonna we'll make those links available for you. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. And God bless you, all of our faithful givers. Thank you for giving so much. It keeps the lights on. It keeps the gospel spreading across the globe. And you know, I never thought I could be a part of that and say that, but literally, the gospel from Family Church in Lake St. Louis is going around the globe. Amen. So we're so thankful to be a part of that. Amen. And so if you'd like to give this morning, there's offering pans up here. You can drop your offering in, or there's multiple ways you can give. If you're watching online, you go to familychurch.net and check out our give button. You can click on that, or you can do text to give. Just text the word tithe. You text your tithe to the offering amount, 84321. Amen. Also, you can just drop it in the mail. Amen. 1586 Dweller Road in Lake St. Louis, Missouri. So God bless you. Thank you for giving today. Amen. You're making an eternal difference in people's lives. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to worship. We give this offering to you, this, this blessing, this tithe to you today, Lord, because you blessed us so much. We give you thanks for all that you're doing in our life. In the wonderful name of Jesus. God bless you as you give unto the Lord today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, like last week, I, I uh, promised you some Boudreaux Thibodeau jokes. And, uh, boy, I searched high and low. And uh, before I tell the jokes, so it's great to have all of our guests with us here in service today. 
And also, it's great to have all of our guests and friends watching online this morning. All of our members that are online, it's great to see you today, wherever you're watching from this this morning. Amen. So, uh, anyway, Boudreaux and Thibodeau, they're down in the bayous of Louisiana. Well, they, they lived over by uh, New, New Orleans, south of New Orleans, and, uh, but uh, Boudreaux heard they had some good gator hunting over, over the Chafalaya, Chafalaya Basin. If you've ever been to Louisiana, it's like a 20-mile bridge, stretches across multiple, multiple swamps and bayous, and, and so uh, Boudreaux said, you know what? A bear. Let's call A bear. Uh, last year, A bear took them on a plane trip, and so... Uh, but they crashed A Bear's plane. So, oh, so, oh no, we can't call A Bear. We crashed his plane last year. So, uh, so they called um, his buddy Marcel. It's Marcel had a little plane, and so uh, Marcel. They got all the all the hunting gear together for alligators. They went over to the Chafalaya Basin, and there for a couple of days they were hunting alligators. They killed four, five, six alligators, and uh, and so they. They uh, went back to the place for the for uh, to get back in the plane. He says, "Oh no, no, I can't take you two and all your alligators. I can only take two alligators." He said, "Oh no, oh no, Michelle, we can't do that. No." He said the last guy last year he let us take all the gators. And the pilot goes, "Well, okay, okay. If 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 he let you take all those gators with you last year, so so they they." A bear, and they all got loaded up in the plane. They got the alligators in the plane, and they begin to take off. And the pilot put the 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 gas all the way down, full throttle, man. And that little plane goes barely up in the sky. And they get about two, three miles away from where they took off, and they had to do a crash landing in the swamp. And Thibodeau looked at a uh, Boudreaux and says, "Oh man, shit again." He goes, "I can't believe we crashed." He, a bear goes, uh, you, think, uh, you think we got further than last year? <laughs> oh, and if you didn't like that, I got one more, okay? <laughs> one more? more? Yeah. All right. Boudreaux and Thibodeau, they're in the front yard, you know? And it's kind of a law in South Louisiana that you have to own a boat. So they got their, they got the little John boat. They're cleaning, they clean, they went duck hunting early that morning. They're cleaning the ducks in the front yard. And, and Boudreaux and Thibodeau, they just sitting there and just enjoying the early Saturday morning. And about that time, a worker goes by. These, uh, a bear down the road been building a new house. And this big work truck goes by, and there's these big rolls of uh, turf. You know, grass, rolled up turf, you know. And... And Tippett goes, Ma, 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 Boudreaux, would you look at that? And Boudreaux looks up at that and goes, Oh, I ain't never seen nothing like that. Hmm. Boudreaux goes, Well, maybe when my mom and daddy die, I inherit a bunch of money, and I can do that too. Tippett goes, What do you mean? Send my grass out to get clean? <laughs> that's, that's, that's funny, man. That's funny. I don't, maybe you can get this thing to work right. I can't get this thing to work right. My notes are just cut off. Maybe that means I need to preach half as long this morning, right? Go we'll get my keyboard pad over there. Amen. But you know what? You know, the computer technology of the church is something else, you know? And uh, you love it, like it, don't like it. Right now, I don't like it. So, uh, but I'm going to talk about something that's just been on my mind and my heart for for quite some time, and it's uh, basically, where are you at in your walk with God? What is God doing in your life? How is God moving in your life? Think about that for a second. Where are you that your walk with God? That's so important to think about that in this, this hour. And um, because 
with all the separation, we're losing accountability. Some people working at home, isolated. People, students now at home and isolated. And sometimes you, you, you kind of lose your, your burning, your fire for the Lord. This morning, I was thumbing through the, new, the, old, the book of Psalms, the Old Testament. And let me read you something that just really sparked a fire in my soul. If you got your Bibles, it's Psalms 42. Probably mo- most of you know the, the psalm. Psalms 42 in the Old Testament. It's on page 620 in my Bible. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, the living God. When shall I come before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they continually say to me, where is thy God? When I remember these things, I poured out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude, went with them to the house of God, the voice of joy and praise for the multitude that kept that holiday. I just love the part of that first verse, the chapter there. My soul pants after the water brooks. As the heart, as the deer pants after the water brook, so panted my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for the living God. So are you in that place in your walk with God today that you're hungry and you're thirsty to want to know more about God? Because God just can't be something, a book on a shelf. He's got to be something down deep down in your soul. Amen. So this morning, I want to talk about just in the next few minutes, I know it's family service, but I really feel a, a, a message that causes somebody to respond to God today. Okay? Everybody say, respond. Say, say, I need to respond to God today. Now look at your neighbor and say, that's, that's, he's talking to you. Now look at your second choice, the person you didn't look at. Tell them that he's talking to you too. In the book of Romans, it says this, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about peace and joy for the last couple weeks here on and off. And today I want to talk about righteousness and having a right heart. And we say, where's my heart? Does God have your heart? I want to ask you that. How much of your heart does God have? And how much of the world does, do you, have you let the world have much of your, how much, how much, I mean, you, you, let's get a pie out here. I like apple pie or pecan pie or, anyway, I kind of got sidetracked. But you slice the pie up, you can only get so many pieces out of it, right? Well, Jesus said in the Gospels, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what have you accomplished? What have you profit? And throughout scripture talks about with my whole heart, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to worship you. Okay. So when it comes down to it, how much have you given to the Lord? We're talking about your heart, your commitment. Are you 100% sold out to the Lord today? Or if I could say it like this, are you surrendered to God today? Because that's going to make a difference in how you live your life. The word righteousness is, is found in Scripture over 500 times. A simple definition of righteousness is standing right with God. Say that with me. Standing right with God. Simple definition of righteousness. So being righteous is the condition of being in a right relationship with the Lord. And it's a process sometimes. It happens when we are walking by faith and we're walking step in step with the Lord and realizing that I need to have a dependence upon Christ. If you want to be righteous, if you want to do right living, that you are going to need to have a relationship with God. You're going to have to develop a relationship with God. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to develop a relationship with God. 
Have you developed your relationship with God? How do you develop a relationship with God? If you got your Bibles, hold your Bible up. Or if you got your Bible app, hold your phone up. Yeah, that's where it starts, reading the Word of God, spending time with God. And you know what? You can't do it on your own, right? You need help. You need the strength of God. And there's a relationship with God and growing in your walk with God. Amen. So I need to turn this like this here now. But there's, there's, between your relationship and your actions with God, because there's, a, there's something that you've got to do with God this morning. I'm just going to put these notes down because I want to talk to you from my heart today. Because we just can't become a, drift, a boat drifting on an ocean. Just let the waves push us to and fro and the winds to and fro. Sooner or later, you have got to make a declaration, I want to serve the Lord. Amen. You got to get to the place where you either love God or you shun evil. Jesus said there's, there's no middle ground. You either love me or hate me. You're either with me or against me. This morning, in the next moment or two here, I'm going to ask you to pray. And I want you to search your heart and see where you truly stand with the Lord today. Because some folks, they are just talking like Jesus talked to the Pharisees. Jesus spoke to the Pharisees. Jesus and the Pharisees, they butted heads all the time. They didn't see eye to eye. The Pharisees, they looked religious on the outside. They knew when to clap their hands during the song service. They knew when to stand up. They knew when to sit down. They knew when to drop their offering in the plate. They made sure everybody noticed they dropped their offering in the plate. They were very religious, church going on the outside. But Jesus looked at them and says, You know what? You're just dry, no heart, just dead men's bones. He says, You're like a, built, a white building on the outside. It's pretty on the inside, but on the inside, it's all dark and dingy and dirty and filthy. And that, I'm afraid that sometimes that we've kind of, this 2020, that's had that effect on some people's walk with God. On the inside, you just kind of grown cold. On the inside, you just kind of just let things go. You let your walk with God go, and it, it, your life has been filled up with things that you know aren't pleasing to God and that are drawing you away from God. I used to preach this old sermon, spiritual zombies. Somebody say zombies. zombies. Yeah, pastor said zombies in church, yeah. Well, back in the day, back before they had internet and everything, I, you couldn't Google what a zombie was. You had to go to the Britannica or the encyclopedia set. And basically what a zombie was is somebody that looked, in a simple definition, they looked alive from a distance. They had all the animated attributes of a person that is alive from a distance. But as you got up close to them, you realized something's off. Something wasn't right. They really weren't alive. They were just going through the motions of life. And sometimes that happens to us. We just go through the motions. We do what we know we should do. We do what is expected of us, that we know what is expected of us. And Jesus looked at the Pharisees and basically said, you know what? You look good on the outside, guys. But on the inside, you're totally missing the mark. Your heart is totally in the wrong place. Look at your neighbor and said, you got to have heart. You got to have heart. You got to have heart. You gotta have heart. And Jesus says, Hey, it's time to get to the place where your heart is totally the Lord's. There's an old song, With my whole heart, Lord, I'm gonna serve you. With my whole life, I'm gonna give it to you, Lord. So during this weird time of 2020 we're having where's your heart 
The old preacher used to say, it's time to stop playing church. Time just to stop sitting in the pew. It's time to just stop playing church and going through the motions and acting like you're something that you're really, really not. Because as time goes on, Jesus says, we'll know you by your fruits. And you'll know what your fruits are. So this morning, can we just pause for just the next few minutes and take inventory of where we are at in our walk with God? We want the righteousness of God, but we can't produce it. You're just producing a false image of something that's not there. Righteousness comes from God's Spirit in our life. And what's in our heart manifests in our actions. So you have a heart that's the Lord's. It's going to produce godly actions in your life. Amen. Amen. Would you stand wherever you're at this morning? If you're watching online, maybe you could stand where you're at or just kneel at your seat today or bow your head. But I want us to have a whole heart prayer meeting this morning and speak to the Lord today and ask him to search our mind, our heart, our lives today. And I want you to be transparent with the Lord today. And I want you, if there's something in your life that you need to ask God's forgiveness, if you need to have a moment of repentance and evaluation, you need to redirect your life. Repentance is simply this, that you basically you're telling Christ that I'm going to turn away my life from a life of sin. And by your grace and your strength and your help, Lord, I'm going to put you first in my life. That I'm going to put away those old habits, those old ways, and not pursue sin anymore, but pursue godly things in my life. Let's bow our heads and pray. If you'd like to come up to the front, we have an altar that you can come and kneel at and pray if you would like to. Or just bow your heads and, or maybe lift your hands and say, Lord, I just surrender to you today. Jesus, we ask for your forgiveness. God, that you would look into my heart, into my life, God. You see what I've been thinking, Lord. See the things I've been dwelling upon in my life places I've been going, activities that I've been participating in, God, things that I've been looking at that I know I shouldn't be looking at, Lord, words and thoughts that I've been using, God, that are not pleasing to you or helpful, God. God, I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your mercy and your grace today, Jesus. God, I want to engage my heart, God. Godly repentance brings sorrow Sometimes it brings tears, God. God, I want every fiber of my being, my life, God, to say, I'm sorry, Lord. I ask for your forgiveness, dear God. I want to turn my life around in purpose, God, from this time of repentance that I'm going to be making an about face. I'm going to turn my life around and follow you, Lord, all the days. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. God, I ask for your forgiveness and mercy. Amen. By the way, some people are praying this morning. I, I don't know. I don't know if your heart is engaged. I don't know if your life is engaged today because I see some people that I just wonder, are you truly sincere in your walk with God? You need to reevaluate if, how you're praying today. Are you praying with passion? Are you praying with thirst and expectation that God is going to be there Yes, he'll be there, but you got to reach out in faith and to, with all your mind, with all your heart. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, folks. Pray like it's maybe your last time. Come on, pray like, come on. we got to reach out to God with everything in our lives today and seek his face. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
your whole heart this morning. Clap your hands to the Lord today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. My last scripture that I was going to share with you this morning, amen, it's found in the book of Romans. Amen. Chapter 3. Amen. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. Could you pull up the next verse of Scripture, Scott? I think it got cut off there. Amen. Being justified freely by grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. All have sinned. All have fallen short. I mean, the wages of sin, what sin gets you is, is eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. 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 Christ wants to do a work in your heart and your life this morning. Amen. I want you to continue. Wherever you're at, your walk with God, maybe you're brand new to this. Maybe this is your first time at a church in a long, long time. 
wherever you're at your walk with God, God wants to help you each and every step of the way. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Would you find somebody close to you this morning? And we're going to pray, but I don't want you to run out. We have a, we have a baptism today. We're going to celebrate here in the next few moments. And we're going to pray that God would just get the waters ready. Heavenly Father, we thank you today for an amazing service. God, I just pray with one another, my friends, God, that you would just strengthen them wherever they're at in their walk with God today. I pray that you draw near to them this morning, God, that you encourage them, let them know that there is no lost cause, that there's nobody that's beyond God's reach and God's mercy today, Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we give you thanks and we give you praise, dear God. We thank you for your grace and mercy today, God. You've been faithful, God. Your forgiveness is real and powerful today. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Can you clap your hands unto the Lord today? In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to give God praise today. We're going to pray for Scotty this morning. Amen. Amen. God has been a strength in his life today. Amen. He's had a rough few months here lately, but he is drawing closer to God this morning. And we're going to believe he's going to, God's going to do a great work in his life. In Jesus' name. David, you can come over here. <laughs> Scotty, by the profession of your faith and the obedience to the word of God, I now baptize you in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Amen. 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 out our hands and let's pray for Brother Scott this morning. Heavenly Father, we just pray over him and his family today, God, that you just be his strength, be his hope, God, be what he needs each and every day when he rises and shines in the wonderful name of Jesus. Let's give God thanks one more time today. Amen. 